Great Lakes Prepping here. Now, if you've watched much of this channel, you know that I make a lot of videos about food preservation, canning, dehydrating, and one of my favorite go-tos, vacuum sealing. Now, I've done a lot of videos about vacuum sealing, both, uh, we'll say, wet things that are destined for the freezer, and also dried goods of all sorts. Dehydrated vegetables, rice, oats, you name it. Well, this video is all about vacuum sealing and storing dried pasta. Now, pasta comes in a million different shapes and sizes, and most of them are very easy to vacuum seal in a mason jar. Some of them, not so much. You got your long spaghetti noodles, and if you wanted to shove a bunch of these into a normal mason jar, you'd have to start breaking them, and you're going to waste a lot of space in that jar. But that's okay. I've got a different method to show you for vacuum sealing and storing long pasta noodles. But anyway, I've got a few different types of pasta to go through in this video, and I'll show you how I vacuum seal and store each of them, and we'll talk about a few tips and tricks along the way. So let's get into it. Now right off the top, let me mention that you can absolutely vacuum seal any kind of dry pasta. As long as it's completely dry, and you vacuum seal it and all the oxygen is removed and there's no moisture, if stored in a cool, dry place, that pasta will last for years. And I mean years and years and years. That being said, I'd like to talk a little bit about the kinds of pasta that I think are best for storing. And a lot of my reasoning has to do with the fact that I like to store them in mason jars. Generally, quart-sized mason jars. Well, there's a pretty finite amount of space in a mason jar, and I don't like to waste much of that with empty space. And so what that means is I like to store pastas that are a little on the smaller side. These little shells, macaroni elbows, and even couscous, which is just the teeniest, tiniest little granules of pasta. With the couscous, there's basically zero wasted space in the jar. With the macaroni noodles, uh, there's very little wasted space, and uh, similar for the shells. And while I do store egg noodles in mason jars in the same fashion, uh, there is a lot of wasted space. These noodles, especially if you get the extra wide ones, which these are just, I think, regular wide, um, you just end up with a lot of sort of gaps in between every single noodle, and you can't fit all that many in a single jar. I do it anyway because I don't have a shortage of mason jars, but... Uh, if you had to choose, the egg noodles would probably be, you know, a little further down your list. And the way that I seal and store all these different types of pasta here is exactly the same. Now, for this method to work, you do have to have a vacuum sealer. And your vacuum sealer has to have something called an accessory port on it. And in the case of my food saver vacuum machine, the accessory port is right here. And it allows me to plug in this little hose, which attaches to something called a jar attachment. Now when I put the little end of the hose on the jar attachment, this allows me to seal a mason jar. It's going to suck every bit of air out of that jar, leaving nothing behind except pasta in a vacuum. It's my opinion that this method is far superior to using oxygen absorbers because not only do I never need to buy oxygen absorbers and worry about them going bad once I open the package, etc., but also with oxygen absorbers, it's only absorbing oxygen. It's leaving every other type of air in there. And yeah, most of that air is not going to lead to spoiling your food. But I feel a lot more comfortable with the vacuum sealer because it's sucking out every last bit of air, including oxygen and everything else. Leaving my food in a complete vacuum inside of a handy mason jar. So let's go through and fill up some of these jars with these different types of pasta and seal them up. I'm going to use my handy little canning funnel here, and I guess we'll just get started with the macaroni. And I'll just carefully pour all this into the jar until it's just about at the top. And that's just about a perfect fit, which is super convenient because in the case of the elbow noodles anyway, one quart jar is equivalent to exactly one box. Now we're gonna take a lid, put it in place, and just sort of carefully set this jar attachment completely over it so it's entirely seated. And then we're just hitting the vacuum button on the food saver.
Now, since we're not heat sealing any bags or anything, we don't have to wait for the, uh, the, the machine to finish doing its seal uh, procedure. Now we just have to pop this lid off. And because there's still suction in this line, this attachment's pretty much impossible to remove until you break that seal. And so just pluck out the little hose and now you can carefully twist that jar attachment right off. And now we've got a perfectly vacuum sealed jar. The lid's firmly in place. You can see the little center of the lid is pulled inward and it's completely sealed. And that's good. Now we just do the same for the other loose pasta. And you see for these medium shells here, one box worth is not going to fit in a single jar. It's really going to need about one and a half jars. So, I don't know, get yourself two boxes and you can fill up three jars. Sealing process is the same. We'll put our hose back into the jar attachment, put down a lid, put the jar attachment in place, and vacuum. Remove the end of the hose, carefully twist the jar attachment off and perfectly sealed jar. Now the couscous. Now the last one we have here is the egg noodles. And again, I'm not gonna be able to fit all of these into this jar. They just, they just kinda waste so much space. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway since I got these egg noodles and I wanna seal them to storm. And just kind of for reference, the contents of this jar plus the contents of this bowl was one standard bag of egg noodles from the store. So I would really need like three of these jars for a single bag of the egg noodles. Just to give you an idea, help you make a decision of whether or not this is the kind of noodle you want to store in mason jars. So that pretty much covers sealing pasta in a mason jar. You know, another huge benefit to doing it this way versus using oxygen absorbers is uh, when I want to use some of my pasta, pop that jar open, use some of the pasta, I can just reseal that jar right back up with the vacuum sealer. With oxygen absorbers, you know, you have to throw in new oxygen absorbers, you're just wasting money, you're wasting materials. This way is awesome. Now I will say that, uh, you know, if I'm making um, a recipe that calls for egg noodles, I'm gonna use this whole jar, no, no question. And if I'm making food for a couple people, I could easily use an entire jar of the, the elbows or the shells. The couscous, this is a lot of couscous. This is, you know, this is a lot of servings worth. So I would never expect to use this whole jar all in one go. So being able to reseal it is a huge advantage and it's a huge selling point to this method of vacuum sealing dry goods. Now, as promised, let's talk about sealing long spaghetti noodles. Unfortunately, there's just not a great way to seal this kind of pasta in jars, unless you wanna break them into small pieces and end up wasting a lot of space, probably wasting a lot of noodles. So what I actually do in the case of the longer noodles is vacuum seal them in a vacuum seal bag. But I know what you're thinking. If I put all these brittle, fragile noodles in here and then vacuum seal it, isn't that sort of vacuum action gonna crush all those noodles and break a million of them? Totally, that's exactly what would happen. So this is pretty much one of the only things I do this with. But in the case of these boxed spaghetti noodles, I'm gonna take the whole unopened box and put it in the vacuum seal bag. Now this is a one gallon vacuum seal bag and it pretty much perfectly holds three of these standard spaghetti boxes. It doesn't matter if it's angel hair or fettuccine, the boxes tend to all be the same size. I'm gonna put that whole thing in there and just vacuum seal this bag up. These boxes, they're fine if you intend to use the product within whatever the expiration date is or the use by date, but these boxes are certainly not airtight by any means uh, or watertight for that matter. They're completely vulnerable to pretty much any kind of uh, oxygen or moisture that your long-term storage could throw at it. So now just like vacuum sealing any vacuum seal bag, all we have to do is put one end into the machine, close it up, and hit our button. Mm. 
And that right there is an absolute brick of spaghetti noodles. Now that suction action is so powerful that you can kind of see it's, it's buckled, each of these boxes, but it's also uniformly squished that it hasn't broken a single noodle. Everything is just perfectly held in place. That's not going anywhere. You could do this exact same thing with boxed macaroni and cheese or really any uh, boxed noodle or rice mixes. Now there's one obvious downfall to vacuum sealing your dried goods in a vacuum seal bag for long-term storage. And that's uh, two things. One, these bags are not especially resistant to pests. They'll probably make this pretty unattractive to a mouse or a bug since there's no smell or anything coming through. A mouse or a bug or a rat could certainly chew right through this. So this is the kind of thing that I would then store in a five gallon bucket with a sealed lid. A lot of my dry goods that, that come packaged in such a way that is pretty sufficient for long-term storage, all that stuff's gonna go in a five gallon bucket anyway. So I'll just toss this in there. The other potential issue is that over time, these vacuum seal bags will start to fail. You know, it's plastic, it's watertight, it's airtight but it's still flexible plastic and there's still microscopic pores in it that over years of time, maybe even months of time, some air will start to get in there. And you might check it in a couple years and notice that the bag is not nearly as snug to these boxes as it once was. So this is the kind of thing that I would make it a point to kind of use first. And if I'm not ready to use it, I'll still definitely inspect it. And if need be, I'll reseal it in a new bag. That isn't a huge problem, you know, don't don't let me make you think that it's this huge issue with this method, but it is something that you have to keep in mind because uh, these bags are definitely not as sort of foolproof and impervious as the glass. So there you have it. I bet you never thought in a million years that you could sit there and listen to somebody talk for this long about sealing pasta in mason jars. Well, I'll be honest with you, I never thought in a million years that I could stand here and talk for this long about putting pasta into mason jars. But here we are, it's happened, we all have to live with it. But hopefully you learned something and you can work on expanding your preps and incorporate lots of dried pasta into your food storage plan. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including lots more food preservation and storage videos. Thanks for watching and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.